friends of John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and in this episode, we're going to share with you guys once and for all how to best juice your favorite vegetable, celery, probably because of Anthony William, the medical medium, in any vertical slow juicer. So actually, I happen to have my favorite vertical slow juicer here today. This is the Omega VSJ843. And if you watch my video down below, where I actually made a video, the best juicer for juicing celery, I compare four different juicers. And to save you guys the trouble of watching that video, this is the machine at the end that I declare the winner, right? Because it took less time and made more yield on the celery, right? And that's very important to me. So the juicing time was less, right? Okay. That being said, in that video, I explained specifically how to juice celery in the VSJ43 or any other vertical juicer. And this video is going to be a detailed video of that because, you know, we've sold many VSJ43 juicers because of that other video. And most customers, like 95, 98% plus, are like, they love it because they follow the directions that I show in the video and you got to do it exactly right if you don't follow my directions this could be actually the worst juicer for celery and vertical juicers in general actually are the worst juicers for, for, for celery if you don't follow my directions right if you just take off celery stalks and put them in like there's a few people on YouTube that do this right you could have massive issues with your vertical juicer including excess pulp coming out into your juice the juicer clogging, backing up, and even worse than that, when you're done, you go to take the juicer apart, and you're like, John, the juicer's stuck, I can't get it apart. And then maybe you have a, you know, young, strong, strapping lad, kid, or maybe a nice, strong husband, or, or wife, sorry, um, that then is able to get it apart literally just by sheer force. And if this happens to you, I have a video down below, uh, seven biggest problems with a vertical slow juicer and how to overcome them and I talk more about this issue, but the whole thing is you don't want to get it jammed up in the first place, and if you're having problems taking it apart, you're not following my directions to the T. So that's why I'm making this video, so whether you have an Omega, a Slow Star, a Kuvings, you know, an off-brand, you know, vertical juicer you got on, from China, on wherever, for cheap, right? You gotta follow these directions, right? That being said, if you guys don't want to pre-cut your celery, right, even, you know, get a different juicer, right? Um, the second place juicer in the best juicer for celery was this guy right here. This is the Omega NC800. This machine is a no-brainer. You literally take the celery stock off, you put it through the machine, you take the pusher, you push it in there, the celery goes in, the juice comes out the bottom, the pulp comes out the front, and you're done right you're done like it's not going to jam up it's not going to clog it's just basically going to work every single time now the challenge is you know in my testing this one got a little more yield uh, and also this one took more time to juice because you're taking each celery stock off and pushing it in one by one and using the pusher to do it um, so you know this is up to you you know if you get up at 4 30 in the morning to make your celery juice early just like Anthony William wants you to do the first thing in the morning and then wait for a while before you eat anything and you're just you're so tired you're still half asleep right maybe you shouldn't get this machine because you do have to pay attention and have things pre-cut or pre-cut things before you go to bed so you can just pull it out of the fridge it's already pre-cut and then you can just drop it in and here's another tip right uh, with this machine you must use the pusher right and I really hate pushing produce into the machine, that, right? That just really bothers me, right? In this day and age, things are automatic. Um, so on this machine, you literally drop the produce in and the machine sucks it in, takes it in automatically at its own pace. Do not, I repeat, do not use the pusher with a vertical juicer. That's a bad thing. Don't do it, right? If you use the pusher, you're more than likely going to push things in faster than the machine could accept it and then you're gonna have a problem with the jamming up, clogging up, putting excessive pulp in your juice, and just not working well for you guys. And I don't want that to happen for you guys, and that's why I make all these videos with in-depth, you know, uh, specific instructions on how to do it and how to use the machines properly. Like, imagine, like, if you grew up in the 60s or the 70s, or wait, no, probably the 80s, and you had a VCR. I know some of you guys are old enough to remember what VCRs are. Maybe Gen, you know, Xers or, you know, whatever, I don't know, but, the program in VCR back in the day was really hard, right? They got, God, they got TiVos and stuff nowadays. Um, 
But you know, if you didn't program your VCR, you weren't going to record your, you know, whatever, as the world turns episode on ABC or whoever plays that stuff, right? The same thing with this machine, you got to follow the exact directions or it's not going to work. If you don't, if you're not willing or wanting to do that, once again, uh, Omega NT Editor. Both the links for this machine and this machine, my two recommended machines, are down below in the description as well as the first comments. You can get to right, get right to one of these to get the best juicer for celery that I've tested to date. In addition, you know, these machines are high quality, high end machines. They're both made in South Korea. South Korea makes some of the best juicers. These are not made in China. And they have 15 year warranties, right? What does that mean? That means you'll basically be juicing for the rest of your life. Uh, these are quite durable machines. Omega has outstanding customer service. Um, you know, all my customers have gotten service from Omega should, you know, the screen break on this, which may happen if you're jamming things in there too fast. And, uh, you know, uh, they always take care of people. Now, the one thing I have against Omega <laughs> recently is because I had a customer with this exact challenge, and that's why I'm making this video. She was trying to juice celery in the VSJ, and it just really wasn't working for her. So I, I told her to watch the part of the video where I juice celery in the comparison, but I'm now making this one for her specifically and for other customers that may have the challenge, or even before you buy the juicer, so you know how to do it. And if you're willing to do it, great. And if you're not, that's all right, too get the other model but uh, she called Omega and she told me that Omega said the VSJ we don't recommend it for celery <laughs> and then she was like really confused wait this guy John said it's the best juicer for celery on YouTube and uh, the customer service rep at Omega says they don't recommend it for celery like what's going on <laughs> so I mean I love the people at Omega I know most a lot of the many of the customer service people for Omega although they get new reps all the time that may not have been trained properly in my opinion I don't exactly know what's going on in Omega but here's the thing right if you've never watched my video <laughs> I don't recommend the PS843 for celery either because you can't just take the celery off put it through the machine and expect it to work properly right it, you're gonna have problems it's gonna back up it's gonna jam or any other vertical juicer for that matter right that's why you gotta follow my specific instructions that I'll be giving you right now, all right? So, all right, let's get started. Celery, super simple, super easy to juice. Before we juice, actually, I wanna give you guys some celery tips, actually, because I've been picking a lot of celery lately. I've been juicing celery for over 20 years, and, you know, just recently, celery prices have inflated and gone up significantly. I only juice organic celery. That being said, even if you're not able to afford organic celery, um, the non-organic celery still, you know, other fruits and vegetables, including celery, are still some of the best foods on the planet, you know, despite any pesticide residue that may be on there, of course, wash it as well as you can. You know, fruits and vegetables, even if conventional, are still way better than basically any other thing you could possibly eat in the grocery store, you know, based on my research. So, um, yeah, there's a caveat. Oh, and then the other thing is, um, if you have a Whole Foods near you, organic celery at Whole Foods seem to be have a pretty stable price across the nation for what I've, from what I've seen. And at present time, it's $1.99 for a head of organic celery at Whole Foods, if you guys have it. And I think like Whole Foods negotiates prices with their farmers like for a good period of time. So I think the celery price is locked in. So that's good, so it's not going to go, because I mean, I just go to local supermarkets here, and regular celery, not even organic, is like three sixty nine, two ninety nine. 2 dollars It's like, man, why would you pay for non-organic there when you could go to Whole Foods and get it for cheaper? And, you know, other places like Sprouts Farmer's Markets, they're very popular. Um, they usually have it for two forty nine or one ninety nine. So, yeah. And then uh, I've seen the celery now is maybe coming down a little bit in price because some of the shortages are now being... Um, taken care of. I think there are some weather issues and now the supply is back. Anyways, and then the other thing I want you guys to pick the freshest celery as possible. Try to get ones that are more deep green as possible instead of more light, uh, like light, light green or even white because that's, you know, not as nutritious, not going to have as much chlorophyll in there. And the other thing I want you guys to look for is weigh your celery. Celery often is sold by the head, not by the pound. If it is sold by the pound, it doesn't really matter so much. But celery, you know, where I buy it is sold by the each. And that's the better way to do it than by the pound. Generally, if it's a per pound, per pound price, it's usually more expensive. I weigh each celery head before I buy it. So in the olden days, just, you know, maybe a year or two ago, I could get like a two pound head of celery for like the same price, 
Nowadays, I've noticed, man, they've been chintzing out. The celery heads, if you notice, are getting smaller and smaller, man. It's like, man, that's not going to produce hardly any juice. So I think, uh, you know, it's celery head. Usually they're around maybe a pound, maybe a pound and a half if you're lucky. So I literally go through, go, with, go to the morning to the grocery store, and they'll put out all the new ones, right? So they'll be full display in the morning because you go later in the day, you, all, they're all picked through, they're all gone. Um, so right in the morning, I go through like all the celeries and uh, I get the ones that are the heaviest and then actually I weigh them on the scale. So all these celeries that I bought here are uh, 1.75 pounds and that's the best I could do. Minimum, I won't buy them unless they're at least uh, one and a half pounds. And in general, here's the tip, right? Um, in general, uh, eight, one pound of uh, vegetables will make approximately one cup or eight ounces of juice in general. So if you get about a two pound head of celery, that'll make you about a 16 ounce glass of juice approximately. And yeah, you wanna get the celery heavy for its weight because some of them may be dried and also you're gonna wanna look for cracking you know, along the bottom or the base. That also means it's uh, you know, not so good. And if you press on the celery and it, it, it gives to pressure, kind of like an avocado when it's ripe, that means the celery is also bad because it's been like, it's drying out on the inside out and that may be a problem near you. All right, so uh, this is all my celery is washed and ready to go. I'm just gonna juice one head and explain to you guys in detail the process, okay? So number one, you got your celery. I washed it, you know, I brush it off top and bottom and then I kind of like, kind of get inside to like open up these little stalks here to kind of spray water down in there because dirt gets uh, stuck in there. And once you do that, you're going to get a nice knife. I have a ceramic knife here. It's kind of like, you know, a, a chopping knife. This is what I would recommend. I don't recommend just a standard knife. It's not going to be as efficient. Minimally, you should have a chef's knife to do this. And take some chef's courses so you can find out how to properly cut things. You know, I'm just a hack. Actually, I hacked my finger with a knife, not this one, the other day. Um, but yeah, once again, if you don't want to pre-cut, get the NC-800, okay? So anyways, uh, you, this can be done safely, not a big deal. We're going to, number one, uh, top and bottom the celery. So, you know, this stalk on the bottom, this, like, you know, where the root goes in the ground, it's cut off and kind of looks brown and stuff. I'm just going to take it, I'm just going to cut off, you know, just a little bit. Because once you do that, then all this celery can come apart. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the top so you can kind of see the brown oxidation on the top. Uh, and so I'm just going to come down. And once again, I'm just going to come maybe like a half inch down. And this is up to you depending on how the good or bad the celery looks. We're just going to cut off all the top stuff so I'm not juicing any kind of bad stuff. You know, then I'm going to inspect the celery and make sure there's like no brown or black spots, especially on the leaves. And so we're going to just pick off a couple leaves and uh, any damaged leaves. No big deal. And then here's like, I've got to cut this off. It doesn't look too good. All right, so now we have our celery that's been topped and bottomed. Now the next step is you need to prepare this for juicing. You can do this night before, put it in the fridge. I recommend only doing it right before you're ready to juice. And this is the most critical step, right? John said to pre-cut the celery. So I just took it and I made like one, two, three cuts, right? That's not good enough. You guys really need to pre-cut your celery before juicing. I recommend one eighth inch pieces. How much is an eighth inch? It's about like that much, right? Maybe the width of a pencil. You know the width of a pencil? If your celery is not that small or smaller, maybe you don't have to do smaller, um, it, it, you can have issues. So one inch pieces to me is not acceptable. Some websites say you cut it half inch or one inch. To me, that's not acceptable. Um, you know, I want you guys to have the utmost level of success, highest level and highest probability of success. And to do that, you have to cut them small. Don't cut them, you know, into a, a, a half inch. You know, you, you may have issues. So the smaller you cut, the better it is. If you want to run this through a food processor to slice it all up, great, do that. I don't think that's necessary. That's a lot of extra work. Just take a knife. It's super simple, super easy. Keep your fingers out the way and just come down. And we're just going to do my best to cut to an eighth, but maybe I'll get to a quarter inch, right? And I'm just coming down and chopping, you know, all the way down, making sure to go through. So basically what this is doing and the reason why I'm doing this is because we need to cut up the long celery strings. If the celery strings or any other strings for that matter from the stock of kale, collards, chard, dandelion greens, whatever has strings in there and you put that through the Omega VSJ uh, vertical juicer or any other vertical juicer, what happens is those strings will get caught will get stuck in the juicer as the pulp is being ejected. You see, 
on vertical juicers, the auger runs vertically, right? That means it runs up and down. When the auger runs vertically, that means the produce goes in, it gets crushed and squeezed, and then the juice comes out and the pulp comes out. When this occurs, what needs to happen is there's a right angle turn, and I'll show you guys this when I'm done chopping. Uh, there's a right angle turn that all the pulp has to come out. And the problem is if you're not pre-cutting these celeries into small enough pieces, the strings will basically jam up that little right angle turn and then it's going to block and then that's when all your problems start. That, and then you're not noticing and then um, you keep juicing and then it just really blocked up and then basically you get a buildup of pulp inside the auger, it jacks up the top, the auger into the top and you can't disassemble it. So this is how a vertical juicer works for you guys. This is a vertical juicer, the auger is running up and down. Uh, the Omega NC800 is a horizontal because the auger runs horizontally, right? Horizontal augers don't have this issue because the pulp makes a right angle turn as it's being crushed and then it does not have to make any other turns. On this machine, the pulp goes, goes uh, the, the, the items go into the machine right through the feed chute, and then it goes into this auger, uh, which is basically spinning around. As the auger is spinning, it basically crushes and squeezes out the juice. The juice then comes out these little holes, and then, uh, you know, comes out the screen, which then it runs down through this flap and just out the front. Meanwhile, the pulp has to go through this little flap here, and what this flap does, it's a silicone, oops, <laughs> it's a silicone flap. And this flap keeps a little bit of back pressure on the pulp so it does not allow it to come out until um, you know it's more dry. Then it has to go through that little, I don't know if you guys see that, um, a little hole there in the bottom. And this little hole can get plugged, especially if you're not cutting to fine enough. This, the strings will basically just clog that hole, then you're going to not be a happy camper, right? So I don't want that to happen to you guys. This plug, once you pull it out, you're just going to have to put it back in. There's a little tab on it to pull it out. It doesn't pull out hard. You're going to put it back in and you're going to make sure it's all the way in. So you always want to have this little plug pushed in when juicing and after you're done juicing you're going to want to pull it out so you could clean the little port here and make sure this little port is clean after every use and you're going to clean the top and the bottom of this little silicone flat plug. Right? Most vertical juicers have this little plug. So then you're going to push it all the way in and then you're ready to juice. So we're going to assemble this machine. Very simple, very easy. We're just going to set this on top here. Then we're going to go ahead and assemble the wiping blade and the screen. So this is the wiping blade. This is the screen. They basically just go in like this and then uh, come down. I had somebody with a problem with this the other day. They couldn't get this uh, wiping blade off. So I recommended taking the screen all assembled, put it on the table, and then push the uh, wiping blade down. You, did you guys see that? You see it was up look very closely and then it goes down and then you should be able to pull it up and then if you just uh, push the screen out right so that, that's the easy way um, to do it and we just put it in and then once you put it in and assemble it this is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle once you do it a few times you'll get it it's not hard you know and to explain this specifically there are little you know notches in the bottom of the screen and there's notches in the bottom of the bowl these need to align so that the juicer goes uh, together properly so I usually just put it in there and then I rotate it until it drops in. Do you guys see that? It's, it's kind of high now. Rotate it and then it, it finally finds them and then drops in. If you want to really pay attention to this, you could find the little indentations here, find the indentations inside the bowl and try to line it up and put it straight down where they need to be so that it goes right in there. The next is take the auger, I take the auger here and on the auger there's these little wing tips. These little wing tips go into the wiping blade where there's a little recess. So I take the auger, kind of get it lined up where it needs to be, and you're going to wiggle it back and forth just a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to go through the bushing, and then you're just going to have to push it down and it's going to find its way in. Right? Not a big deal. I know, especially if you guys just bought your juicer and you're assembling it the first time. John, it's not going to... Trust me, I want you guys to keep trying. It will work, right? I have a video where actually I'm juicing in with this juicer with a blindfold on because I can assemble it and do everything blindfolded. I've used it, I even know like probably a thousand plus times I've juiced in this juicer now. And so once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. 
and I know when you guys just first buy a juicer or you're, you've been doing it maybe not the right way and you're, you're having problems and frustrations, you just get really pissed and you just, I don't want the machine anymore. So, you know, I want you guys to, you know, I mean, this is the best juicer overall of all the juicers I sell at discountjuicers.com. This is the one that I choose to sit on my counter that I use on a regular basis, uh, you know, despite having a pre-cut salary like we just did. People don't understand that this machine across all the board of all the juicers on the market that I've tested to date, right, um, gets the highest yield, puts a less, you know, pulp in the juice of any vertical slow juicer, and it is it, it is easy, easiest to clean of any vertical juicer. It takes me three minutes. In addition, vertical juicers, unlike a horizontal juicer, is basically better at juicing a wide range of things. So being this machine can juice wheatgrass if properly pre-cut. It juices leafy greens great, even rivaling the NC800. Uh, and more importantly, it juices fruits significantly better than the NC800. Um, you know, pineapples will clog up the NC800. You really can't juice straight pineapples in the NC800 with this one. If you, once again, I have a specific video on juicing pineapples in the BSJ43, you follow my directions, select a hard and firm pineapple, it's going to work great, right? So that's why I like this. It's the most versatile, fastest, fastest, and easiest to clean. There's less nooks and crannies. And unlike other vertical juicers, the screen in this juicer does not get impacted with pulp like maybe a Slow Star or a Kuvings would when you're done juicing for some reason. I'm not really sure why that is, but that saves me like a 30 seconds or even a minute on the cleaning. So really, I mean, <laughs> this is the best juicer on the market, and that's what I use. It, also, because it's auto-feeding, it saves me time. I tend to juice in volume, all juice you know, four quarts at, in one sitting. I actually had an appointment the other day um, and I basically, if, if, I had like 40 minutes before my appointment and I was able to get all the juice made, four quarts, but the juice are not clean. I needed probably about an hour. I could have probably in an hour, I could have juiced everything from prepping it, cutting it, feeding it, um, and be cleaned up, you know, with an hour to make four quarts. So that's maybe like one quart in 15 minutes, okay? So anyways, uh, then the top, you got to line up this little uh, orange arrow uh, to this orange arrow, then you're going to line it up, but then you're going to put it to the right, and then you're going to just lock it back to the left, and then lock it back in place. So the arrow, sorry, the arrow is going to go straight facing back, and then you're going to line it up to face the, each other, and if you've done that correctly, the machine will turn on, right? The other thing I want you to do is if you notice, there's some weird kind of noises like it's kind of clicking as it's going. This is totally normal. Don't be alarmed. You know, the screen is going around. And so here's the thing. Don't run the machine empty, right? Unless you're turning it on and you're going about to juice in there. Don't run it empty. Actually, because the, the produce provides lubrication as the water in there to kind of help lubricate all the parts, um, you know, as it's going. So I don't recommend running any juicer empty for any significant period of time. All right. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Now, now that we've got everything pre-cut, and this is the pre-cut size, maybe a quarter inch, some of them I got down to like eighth inch, if you guys want to see the exact size there. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I just have standard size fingers. It's thinner than my finger, so, you know, you want the slices thinner than your finger. So once you do that, you're just going to take a handful at a time, whatever, if you got a big hand or a small hand, I don't care, and you're just going to dump it in the feed chute. Now, I am using a sieve here because I want my celery juice totally fine. Um, I don't want any kind of extra pulp in there, although this is going to really not catch too much. You're gonna let this process, you can see it start to come out. You know, you can look down the chute and I'm probably not gonna see any celery in there because of the process. We're gonna pick up the next handful. Drop that in there, right? The amazing thing about the VSJ43 is I'm not using the pusher, you know, so I can be sitting here, I chop a few, take it, and then I drop it in there. And then I continue to chop more, and as I'm chopping more, okay, I chop a little bit more, then I can drop it in there. So, I mean, you can get really efficient on depending on how fast and efficient you want to be. And normally I'm like that, but I want to explain this for the video. And the, and the easier way to do it is to not be rushed, is to have everything pre-cut and ready to go. So we're just taking a handful at a time, dropping it in the machine. At the same time, we want to pay attention, right? Um, you know, we want to make sure that the pulp continues to come out and it's not getting stuck up. If you pre-cut properly and are not just jamming produce in, jamming produce in, you know, I put a handful in, I'm talking in, I'm taking some time, you can hear it crunching it up, squeezing, extracting all the delicious rich juice with all those mineral salts that Anthony William wants to get with all the different, you know, uh, phytonutrients and phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals and the celery that we're, that's making it easy to digest, right? 
Now I will say I do not recommend a blender for making celery juice. In my opinion, that's probably one of the worst ways to do it um, because it oxidizes heavily the juice and those high speed juicers oxidizes the juice and does not get as much nutrition out. Once again, link is down below for the best juicer on celery where I go over this further. You can see our celery juice is nice, deep, and green. So once again, handful by handful, the pulp's still coming out. Um, because we've cut it small, that little port is um, not getting clogged up. We've got a little bit of pulp, um, you know, being caught by the sieve. To me, you could just drink that, you know, it would not be objectionable. Um, other vertical juicers will put significantly more pulp in the juice, so please be aware of that. Let that process, once again, we hear, you can hear the difference, okay? Hear it processing, it's like crunching up, it's like it, it's like you're chewing it up, it's chewing it up, you don't want to add anything yet, okay, the chewing is kind of subsided a little bit, now, we, then and only then, you can add some more stuff in, right? Super important, take your time, although this is a slow juicer, it, it can be done relatively quickly, um, but you need to slow down a little bit, all right? So I'm holding the next handful up. All right, now I'm gonna dump that one in, right? The slower you go, the smaller you chop, the better your experience will be, right? The bigger you chop, the bigger pieces you got, the more you use the pusher, the most horrible your experience is gonna be. And I don't want you <laughs> to have a worse experience. That's why I make these videos for you guys with taking time out of my day to show you guys specifically the right process to do celery. You know, I'm still seeing all the pulp that we're free flowing. It may not be a fat wide stream, but we got a nice small thin screen stream. It's about the size of actually the hole. So that's the hole. And this is the size that's actually coming out. I don't know if you guys can see that here. It's about like that width right there coming out. And uh, once you put the last uh, bunch of celery in, you're, you're gonna wanna let the machine run maybe like another 30 seconds. Now here's a tip I haven't given before. Once you're done and it runs another 30 seconds or a minute, it's gonna clear out what's mostly in the top there. And if it isn't, that's all right. You, you can go ahead and then reverse the machine a little bit. Then you're gonna hit it forward. Now the other thing I want you to do is when we're gonna take this apart, what we're gonna see, and let me go ahead and do that. We're gonna shut it off, let it totally stop, pull it apart. And what we're gonna see is we might see a little bit of celery left on the auger. And I did not fix this. This is what's actually in my juicer. You can see a few bits of celery there at the top. You got the shreds along here. But it, this is not clogged up. It's not jam-packed of celery. There's not like big stocks and big pieces. That's because I pre-cut properly and fed it properly. I wanna show you guys actually what's inside here now too, inside the screen, what you gotta clean. Not a lot, you guys can see, yeah, there's some little residuals in there, you know, not a big deal. Um, you know, this is pretty effective at juicing. If you juice right, once again, if you don't pre-cut, it's not gonna look like this, and you're not gonna be able to disassemble this as easy as I did. In addition, when you're done juicing, you should be able to look at it, th this down here, and pretty much down in here, you can see it's all full, but that's totally normal, but we have no major blockages. So it worked really easily, really nicely, really easily, um, you know, once, once you do it properly and uh, follow the directions. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is, so I had the, a customer, the same customer, that had some challenges juicing celery, so now I showed you how to juice celery properly without it jamming, with having very little left actually on the auger being really efficient. Um, once again, we're gonna go ahead and take this screen off, so to do that, the easiest way is keep it on the table, push this down, it'll kind of move down, maybe actually about a, a half or quarter inch. Then we could go ahead and lift this screen out, and uh, on this, there's basically uh, two solid pieces of plastic, and then there's these wiping blades. These are silicone wiping blades. So I do not recommend removing these wiping blades. If you want to remove them, maybe remove them once a month or maybe even once even six months. I basically do not remove these guys because to get them back in is a real hassle, a real pain, and I would say don't do it unless you're really adventurous and like puzzles, okay? Um, so should you remove these and it's easy to remove because you just basically just pull this out and this is what it is and You're gonna want to wash this, you know, at least maybe once a month or you know uh, Or maybe more maybe less depending on how how you are I basically just like to take the scrub brush and scrub it top and bottom up and down uh, You know uh, you know in the seams and try to like move it back to get everything But it, by chance if you do remove it it comes out and oh, I have a little bit of buildup on mine I should probably be washing it more often um, to put it back in, not too, it's not too difficult. So uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take this and you're going to put it through, like line it up, and there's like a little notch in the top. So you kind of want to get it in at an angle. See how I kind of have that in an angle? And then I'm going to um, 
put it in an angle and just keep pressing it really hard, right? Keep pressing it really hard and you guys can see it went back in place and then the bottom, once again, just push it in real hard and it goes back in place. Once again, this is one of those things, if you've never done this before, right, it's gonna be hard, right? Once again, right technique. You see that little lip on there, right? You gotta get that lip underneath, kind of putting it in diagonal. Then I kind of hold it right here, right um, where the tab ends and just push, right? Goes right in, not a problem. Once again, the bottom, uh, push it in there and then just push really hard and uh, this should go back in as well. You know, once again, don't recommend doing that unless you want to have some fun. It, it went in abnormally easily for me this time. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. I've had sometimes real big challenges with getting, you know, the little uh, silicone rings in uh, harder, easier. Sometimes I've actually, you don't want to really use tools to push or pull this in uh, because um, you could damage it. Um, this, should these get, you know, messed up or whatever, you could always order more from Omega. They're really inexpensive. But yes, um, I mean, that's the technique. Um, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and pour out my fresh made celery juice here. Oops, and there's a little pulp I caught, not too much. And uh, we're gonna pour this out into a glass and we have one nice fresh glass of celery juice. Look at that nice, deep, deep rich color, not separated like a high speed centrifugal machine would be. Uh, you know, this is a high quality juice. You know, now I have basically three minutes of cleaning this machine, just scrubbing off this, you know, and the other thing that I want to mention is make sure on the screen you clean it right after you're done and scrub it, you know, front and back. You want to dislodge the pulp from all the holes. Should the pulp dry in the holes, you know, there's no other recourse than taking like a little bobby pin to uh, push it push it through to, uh, you know, uh, clean out the little holes. So you want to clean that right afterwards, uh, front and back. They do give you a cleaning brush, although I like to use a standard dish brush that I buy at Ikea for 50 cents. Uh, there's a lot more surface area, so it allows me to clean the screen faster and be done cleaning the juicer so I can get back to my life. So uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode, learning how to juice celery in the vertical slow juicer, you know, it's super simple, super easy. Number one, pre-cut small. Eighth inch is the goal. I'll let you get by with a quarter inch. Two, Take your time when feeding. Three, uh, you know, make sure when you get the celery, you, you properly prepare it. You cut off, you know, all the strings and all the bad stuff. And you'll be having some juice like this, right? Super simple, super easy. I think, I think we're going to go ahead and try it for you guys. Mmm. That's a fine celery juice today. Love it. So, uh, yeah. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. That'll motivate me to do more videos, tutorial videos on how to juice this or that, because I've juiced a lot of things in my juicers. Um, also, be sure to share this video with somebody else that may be on a medical medium juicing program, you know, that may be a juicing forum that is using a vertical juicer that just complains that it's not working with celery. Watch this video, follow my instructions, and you're going to have a great time. It's going to work amazing, okay? And next, make sure you click the subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes I've coming out about every uh, five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up. Or we'll be learning on my YouTube channel. You might have a demonstration video, tutorial video, or even a comparison video where I compare the different juicers so that you guys get the right one for me, for you. <laughs> because that's the most important. You know, I've my life has been changed by juicing. I turned my health around. Juicing was my first step into eating a healthier lifestyle. And I'm highly confident that it can also work for you because the fruits and vegetables are the best foods on the planet for your health, in my opinion, and based on my research. And uh, the juicer allows you to get more of them into you than you otherwise would. I mean, I already had three juices. This is my fourth juice already today. I had two 32-ounce juices and one 16-ounce juices already. And actually, I, I think we're gonna maybe eat some ripe peaches next. So uh, yeah, subscribe, uh, make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Once again, the link is down below to the video where I compare all the different four juicers for the best juicer for celery, so you can see how this one won, as well as more about the NC800 if you don't want to pre-cut your produce. And uh, yeah, over 500 videos comparing different juicers so that you guys can get the right one for you. It is so important that you guys get the right juicer and start juicing today because it can make the biggest health difference uh, that you've experienced if you are not already doing it, based on my opinion and my experience in real life, okay? Finally, I want to encourage you guys to support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. This allows me to continue to make these educational videos to share with you guys 
how to juice certain things, comparing one juicer against another to save you guys time, effort, and, and money from having to buy a juicer, not get the right one, and then return it, right? I want you guys to get the right juicer the first time and be happy with it. And that's why I go through the extent to you know show you guys what you need to do to use a juicer properly. If you want to do it, great, <laughs> you know? And if not, that's great too. Get a different juicer, okay? Um, so yeah, make sure you purchase that discount juicer. This allows me to continue to pay my light bill, buy my salary, so I can continue to juice and make these videos for you guys. So I want to thank you guys in advance for those of you guys who uh, will purchase from me. And I want to thank you guys who have purchased from me in the future. Uh, it's much obliged. Okay. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.